and welcome to Syrovod. I'm Glenn Paul. I'm in the northern Queensland town of Ingham in sugarcane cattle country where today we're visiting the cattle station called Mangala which is owned by the traditional Nawagi people who are having a problem with a biological pest which is infesting their waterways and CSIRO has been doing their bit to help them out. Mangala station is located about 12 kilometres outside of Ingham and forms the vision for the Nawagi Aboriginal Land Corporation to build enterprises out of the station to improve the economic and social position of their people and to date that includes cattle and tourism ventures. The pioneer of Mangala station was James Cassidy, an Irishman who immigrated in the 1800s as a result of the potato famine. He pioneered Mangala station in 1882 breeding racehorses and cattle. Over the years, the station fell into other hands until 1999 when the property was sold to the Nawagi Aboriginal Land Corporation as part of the Indigenous Land Corporation's property buyback under native title. Mangala Station is a small part of their traditional lands and is a mix of cleared grazing lands, uncleared and regrowth forest on sand ridges, freshwater wetlands, mangrove and other saline wetlands. It's home to an amazing collection of wildlife, particularly around the wetlands, and everywhere you look you see something moving about. This tree snake didn't seem too fussed by our presence. But all this is now being threatened by a noxious pest, the exotic grass Hymenacne. Hymenacne is a semi-aquatic grass that was introduced as livestock feed into Queensland, but has since escaped from cultivation and now seriously threatens northern wetlands. I caught up with Jay Cassidy of the Mangala Aboriginal Business Corporation and Mangala Station Manager Henry Miller for a tour of the wetlands and asked Jake about the Hymenacne problem. Hymenacne was introduced to this country um, probably in the last 20 or 30 years and it's uh, here at Mangala. It's had a significant impact um, on, the, um, on the wetlands and, and creek systems. These wetlands are very uh, sensitive to um, the traditional owners, the Nawagi people, um, not only uh, environmentally but culturally, our storylines come through here, but also uh, economically because um, we have a, a, a tourist industry, a tourism enterprise, sorry, um, that operates around here. And um, part of the, the um, experience that people get is they visit these uh, wetlands and uh, uh, work in cattle properly. It's not only the waterways suffering. Hymenacne also infests and blocks drainage and irrigation channels used for sugarcane and contaminate sugarcane crops. Ingham is sugarcane country and home to the Victoria Sugar Mill, the largest sugar mill in Australia and one of the largest in the Southern Hemisphere. CSIRO is working to bring together both Western science and Indigenous ecological knowledge to develop land management practices and a long-term strategy to restore the health of the Nawagi country. And I asked Jake about this relationship. It's been great, the partnership that we've had with CSIRO. Um, it really gave us a lot of information about what we're dealing with. Um, they've also showed us uh, the steps that we take. And it's basically one of the things, it's given us a plan a strategy and how we um, um, take steps in um, rehabilitating these wetlands. Around the Mangala homestead this knowledge is already being applied with Henry Miller and his crew regularly spraying the Hymenacne growing along the river bank at the back of the house. A small specially fitted boat is used for spraying this pest and Henry invited me to take a cruise upstream to see how all this hard work was paying off. The river runs back into the sea and in North Queensland that means you're likely to find yourself in crocodile territory, one of the hazards of the job when spraying for home and acne. And Henry explained how it's not unusual for an unfortunate cow to become crocodile food. Yeah, see where those trees are? Yeah. yeah. Just pull the whole cow into the water and just... Near the crocodile rock, mate. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> and over this one, there's another one over there, had no head on. So you must have had a drink? Yeah, right. Took his head off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we head back down the river where we are to meet up with Dr Tony Grice from CSIRO Sustainable Ecosystems who's been working with the team at Mangala to battle Hymenacne. secret with Hymenacne, as with many weed species is to find uh, a combination of approaches. For instance, uh, the use of uh, herbicides, fire and grazing or mechanical treatment is probably most appropriate for Hymenacne. I asked Henry about some of the traditional methods of controlling the weeds, such as burning. Three times a year you burn. Okay. In the winter months, once you spray it, mainly on the flats, you spray it, you let it rot, then you burn. Then if it comes up again, you spray, 
rot burn. Uh, and how you big problems like this don't go away uh, overnight. So we would like to work with uh, Mangala and the Wagi people to have ongoing um, development of uh, management strategies, whether they're directed at uh, Hymenaipi specifically or other, other aspects of, of managing their country, to, to better understand it and to uh, hone those techniques to improve them. I mean, the Nuwagi people would have uh, far longer knowledge of uh, this land and how it's changed, uh, but importantly it's been good to get a perspective on Nuwagi values for uh, wetlands and other parts of their country. Yeah. You see this land as ever being as it was? Oh, close to it, but um, I, I think it's too far gone, but uh, we'll try our best to get it down. So together, CSIRO and the Nawagi people are having some victories against home and acne, but it's going to take some time and some more great science and knowledge sharing to win this battle. So that's just one of many projects that CSIRO is involved with around Australia and here at Mangala Station, working with the Nawagi people in combating this noxious pest will continue for some time. If you'd like more information on this or any other story that CSIRO is involved with, just go to our website at www.csiro.au.